Hello learners, welcome to our session for today in Let's Learn Science. I am your science teacher, Ms. Serban. But before we start, make sure that you have your lecture notebook with you, your pen, and our activity sheet for week 6. So our topic for today will be all about layers of the earth. Our main objective is to describe each layer so that we can figure out why the plates are moving in plate boundaries. So we have here the three layers of the earth. We have the crust, the mantle, and the core. The crust is the thinnest and outermost layer of the earth. The mantle is beneath the crust, which extends to about 2,900 kilometers from the Earth's surface. The core is subdivided into two layers, the inner and the outer core. Let's discuss first the crust, which is the outermost layer. The crust is the thinnest and the outermost layer of the Earth that extends from the surface to about 32 kilometers below. Underneath some mountains, the crust thickness extends to 72 kilometers. So this means that the crust varies in thickness across the earth. When or if the place of the earth has mountains and volcanoes, the thickness of the crust is thicker. Okay, and if the place of the earth is a field, so it is thinner. The crust is subdivided into two regions, the continental crust and the oceanic crust. So we have here a picture showing the regions of the crust, the oceanic and the continental crust. The oceanic crust is around 7 to 10 kilometers thick and its average thickness is 8 kilometers. It is found under the ocean floor and is made of dense rocks such as Basalt. So here in the picture, we can see there is the continental crust under the ocean floor. Okay, on the other hand, we have the continental crust, which is made up of silicon, oxygen, aluminum, calcium, sodium, and potassium. It has thickness of mostly 35 to 40 kilometers. So it is evident in the, uh, in the picture that the continental crust is thicker compared to the oceanic crust, having a 35 to 40 kilometers, while oceanic crust has only a 7 to 10 kilometers. But it is made of less dense rocks, such as granite rock. So, continental crust has lesser density compared to oceanic crust. Oceanic crust has a higher density because of its dense basaltic rocks. Okay, so in this picture, we can also notice the lithosphere or the combination of the crust and the uppermost solid mantle. So, this is the lithosphere, the outermost solid part of the earth. Okay, again, it is composed of crust and uppermost solid mountain, uh, mantle. The elements in the Earth's crust is uh, composed of oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium, titanium, and hydrogen. So based on this table, we have oxygen as the most abundant element in the Earth's crust, having a percentage of 46.60, while hydrogen has the least of 0.14%. So that's it for the crust. Let's proceed to the mantle, which is the second layer of the earth. The mantle is beneath the crust, which extends to about 2,900 kilometers from the earth's surface. It makes up about 80% of the earth's total volume and about 68% of its total mass. So as we can see here in the figures, the mantle is the largest part of the earth okay it is more than 50 percent of the earth's volume and total mass so it is semi-solid 
which means the high temperature and pressure in the mantle allow the solid rock to flow slowly. So on our discussion before, the lithosphere, the upper part of the mantle is composed of solid rocks. Okay, and there is a part of the mantle wherein the rocks can flow because of the high temperature and pressure. So you will, or we will examine that on the picture afterwards. Mantle is made up of silicate rocks and elements, silicon, oxygen, iron, and magnesium. The lower part of the mantle consists of more iron than the upper part, which makes it denser than the upper portion. So again, density uh, depends on the composition. So in this part, the mantle with the more iron has higher density compared to the part of the mantle which contains fewer iron. So we have here the picture. On the purple box, we have here the mantle. We have the lower part and the upper part of the mantle. The upper part of the mantle consists of this part, okay, the solid part of the mantle, and we have here the asthenosphere. Now, what is asthenosphere? Asthenosphere is a soft, weak layer made of hot molten material. Its temperature is about 300 to 800 degrees Celsius. The upper 150 kilometers of this uh, asthenosphere has enough temperature to facilitate a small amount of melting and make it capable to flow. So as you can see here, because of higher temperature, okay, the asthenosphere can facilitate small amount of melting. So if you can still recall the collision of oceanic crust and continental crust, the oceanic crust tends to subduct or to move beneath the continental crust. The leading plate of the oceanic crust, which is subducting, is going down to the mantle. Okay, and because it is going down to the mantle, which is or which has higher temperature, that oceanic crust tends to melt. Okay, this property of the asthenosphere facilitates the movement of the lithospheric plate. So, because of the high temperature in the mantle, the rocks subducting to it tends to melt, and those melting process facilitates the movement of lithospheric plates because they will turn into magma. Okay, and the magma uh, exhibits the property of a liquid which is flowing. That is why when the magma on the mantle flows, the lithospheric plates above it will also flow in the direction of the movement of the magma in the mantle. Okay, so detailed discussion will be next week regarding that one. It, there, uh, it has something to do with the directions of the plate's movement. Okay, so we are done with mantle. So now let's proceed to the innermost layer of the earth, which is the core. The core has the highest temperature, has the highest pressure, and it is also subdivided into two layers, the inner and the outer core through the help of P and S waves. So as we dig in the center of the earth, we can uh, experience the increase in temperature and increase in pressure. Okay. And the scientists discovered that our core is subdivided into two layers because of the P and S waves. As you can remember our discussion on our first week, P and S waves can travel in the layers of the Earth. And the, those characteristics of each wave can determine the medium or the composition of our, the layers of the Earth. Now, the P wave can travel in solid, 
liquid and gas, uh, solid and liquid. Okay, and S waves can travel only on solids. Okay, now P and S waves refract or bend whenever they travel uh, different mediums. For example, from solid to liquid or liquid to solid, they will bend. Okay, and based on the data gathered by the scientists, the P wave had uh, bent twice after passing the mantle. Okay, so meaning if the P wave bent twice, there is two layers more after the mantle. And then S waves was not traced after passing through the mantle. It was absorbed. So remember, S waves cannot travel in liquids. That is why the scientists concluded that the outer core is liquid and the inner core is solid. Okay. Again, it is because of the help of the P and S waves. That's why the scientists discovered that the core is divided into two layers and the outer core is liquid and the inner core is solid. Okay, so what are the characteristics of outer core and inner core? So the outer core is 2,900 kilometers below the earth. It is 2,250 kilometers thick and is made up of iron and nickel. The temperature reaches up to 2,000 degrees Celsius at this very high temperature, iron and nickel melt. That is why the outer core is liquid because of the high temperature. So since it is liquid, it has the ability to flow. And because of the flow or the movement of the liquid outer core, the Earth's magnetism is being created. Okay, so again, since the outer core is composed of liquid iron and nickel, <coughs> excuse me, it will flow and the movement of the outer core facilitates the creation of the Earth's magnetic field. So our, our outer core plays a very important role for us humans also. Okay, on the other hand, Inner core is made up of solid iron and nickel and has a radius of 1,300 kilometers. So it is uh, smaller compared to the outer core. The temperature reaches to about 5,000 degrees Celsius. Okay, now uh, come to think of it, inner core is or has a higher temperature compared to outer core, but our inner core is solid. Okay, now why? It is believed to have solidified because of the pressure freezing, which is common to liquids subjected under tremendous pressure. So it is because of pressure freezing that is why our inner core is solid. Pressure freezing is uh, a process wherein when liquids are subjected to tremendous and uh, pressure or tremendous temperature, it tends to be solidified. Okay, remember liquids when they are subjected to tremendous or very high amount of pressure and temperature, it tends to be solid. That is why inner core is solid. Okay, so remember, as we go deep inside the uh, earth, the temperature gets higher as well as the pressure and also the density. Okay. So let's have the summary of our discussion for this day. The thinnest and the outermost layer of the earth is crust that extends from the surface to about 32 kilometers below. We also must remember that the thickness of the crust varies across the earth. 
is subdivided into two regions, the continental crust and oceanic crust. The continental crust is thicker and less dense than oceanic crust. Oxygen is the element most abundant in our Earth's crust. The mantle makes up about 80% of the Earth's total volume and about 68% of its total mass, making it the largest part or largest layer of the Earth. The stenosphere is a part of the mantle that facilitates lithospheric movement. Mantle is semi-solid. The core is subdivided into outer core and inner core. Flow of liquid iron and nickel in the outer core creates the Earth's magnetic field. So that is a special feature of the outer core. Inner core is solid because of pressure freezing or a process wherein liquids are solidified when subjected to High, very high temperature and pressure. Okay, so thank you for watching and thank you for listening for our discussion for today. If you have questions, you may type it in the comment section or you may have your direct message to me or to your subject teacher. So that's all for today. Thank you and God bless.